couple of years ago, I made a cat tree for my living room. My cat Dylan seems to really like it. I think they like to perch up in high places and look down on the world. It was made out of a log that I found in a woodland area near my house that's about seven feet tall. I made the bottom from two reclaimed scaffold boards. I wrapped some string around the base of the log to use as a scratching post, although Dylan hasn't used that. The shelves are made from some wood that I found in my loft when I moved into my house that were being used as loft boards. I glued some carpet to the second shelf and that's the one that Dylan seems to like the most. He'll often curl up and fall asleep there. And the shelf brackets were also made out of the reclaimed scaffold boards that I just cut out using a hacksaw and then shaped with a belt sander. I added the fairy lights later just for decoration and also put a toy robin on the top. So recently when I stumbled across this log that was a good size and looked like it was only recently cut down with a chainsaw, I decided to make another one. I started by stripping the bark off the log with a spoke shave. I mainly did this just to check that there was nothing living inside the bark. I didn't find any bugs living inside. I used my legs to keep the log steady while shaving the bark from the top. I used a carving knife to remove the bark on any awkward bits. Then I gave the whole thing a good sanding down. Then I positioned the log on my mitre station to chop off the bottom of the log. I placed it upright on the floor to check that the cut was fairly straight. I had an offcut of kitchen worktop which was left over from when I built my mitre station and I thought that would make a good base for the cat tree as it's 40mm thick and quite heavy so it was ideal. I chopped it down to approximately 50cm by 50cm on the table saw. Then I positioned the log where I wanted it which was about 9cm in from one side and from the back and drew around it with a sharpie pen. I drilled a hole with a spade drill bit and that allowed me to get my jigsaw blade through so I could cut out the rest of the shape. With the hole cut, I pushed the log through as far as I could. I wanted to get the bottom of the log flush with the bottom of the worktop base, so I chiselled away at the log and used a scrap piece of wood and a hammer to ease it in. It took a while to get this right but eventually it was in and flush enough. Then I cut a scrap of half inch plywood to the same size as the worktop base. I marked up roughly where the log was using a pencil and then screwed the plywood to the bottom of the worktop base. Then I drilled through the plywood into the log and put in some long screws to secure it to the base. I wanted to make a little enclosure at the bottom of the cat tree. I planed down some pallet wood on the jointer and then set up a stop block at the mitre station to cut some slats to about 34cm which would be the height of the enclosure. I chopped several bits to this length and then rounded the edges of each piece on the belt sander. The pallet wood was full of knocks and bumps and nail holes and I wanted to retain all of that rustic character in the wood and I thought that sanding down the edges would give it a nice worn in look. Then I ripped down some more pallet wood into strips that I could use as cleats to build the walls of the enclosure. I chose which sides of the pallet wood that I wanted to face inwards and outwards and then glued and screwed the cleats to create a wall panel. Then I screwed another cleat to the base using a piece of pallet wood as a spacer to set the distance from the edge. This cleat would then be used to secure the wall panel to the base. For the other side of the wall, I wanted it to fit around the log, so I roughly marked up the shape of the log with a pencil and used a combination of the bandsaw, a chisel and the belt sander to carve out the shape in the wood.
and eventually I was happy with the shape. I added another cleat and started to make the second wall. I also added a third cleat to secure this wall to the log, which you can't see very well in this shot. This was to make the whole structure even more rigid. I used a speed square to check the wall was at perfect 90 degree angle to the base. Then I added the rest of the pieces to make the wall. I made the back wall in the same way again. That left me with one final corner to sort out, so I again marked up the shape of the log and shaped the piece as best I could. And for this piece I just glued a nail to the back wall and then knocked in the nails beneath the surface of the wood with a nail punch so they couldn't be seen. Next I wanted to make a roof for the enclosure which would also be the bottom shelf of the catchery. I had some wood that a friend donated to me that was salvaged from some pallet collars. I squared off one side of the rounded over edges on the table saw and then glued and clamped the two freshly cut edges together to form a panel. I left this to glue overnight and then removed the clamps, used a cabinet scraper to remove any glue squeeze out and then sanded down the panels with my orbital sander. I then trimmed the edges on the mitre saw. To cut the panel so it would fit around the log, I made a cardboard template by snipping away with some scissors until I found the right contour. Then I transferred this shape onto the wood panel and cut it out on the bandsaw. That was a pretty good fit, however it was at this point when I realised I'd made a miscalculation at some point and the panel was not wide enough to cover the whole enclosure. So I squared off the outside edge of the panel on the table saw and then ripped another piece down that I could glue and clamp on to make the panel wide enough. When the glue had dried, I could then trim it down again to size on the mitre saw so that the new piece I'd just added was flush with the rest of the panel. I could then glue the panel to the walls of the enclosure and ran my fingers around the edge just to centre it. Then I attached the roof panel to the walls by screwing through the cleats into the roof panel in several places. To make the interior a little bit more comfortable for cats, I used a chisel to round off the sharp edges on the cleats on the inside and then came back with a sander to smooth them over. And to create an entrance I glued and nailed another piece of pallet wood to the front and added some clamps to glue this piece to the roof panel. Then I added another cleat at the bottom, kind of a doorstep I guess and I added two more pieces of pallet wood to create a door frame. Again I used a nail punch to hide the nails beneath the surface of the wood. 